Welcome to this Excel video. What you're looking at on your screen is what we're going to build today. It is a profile of an athlete using a radar chart. Now to do that we've got six different fitness tests. Um, we've got data being pulled through from a, uh, a few different options. I've just got test one, two and three here but uh, you could choose from other test data sets and we're going through a, a formula equation to produce a score that allows this profile to be drawn. So to do this particular exercise, we're going to have to do a little bit of data validation, write a VLOOKUP formula or two, use indirect inside one of those VLOOKUPs, and then a big nasty IF function. So let's go across here to the new page. First thing I want to do, create a little drop down list that allows us to select an athlete. So if I select list, I've, I've created a list already, but if I don't remember the name, I can just type F3, and any defined names that I've created will appear here. So I'm just going to click on names, and there we go. Whenever I build something for someone else to use, if there's a cell that I like data validation to be in, and I want to cue them to make a selection, I usually color that a certain way. The next thing I want to build is the ability to pick which test data set to pull from. So I've got five data sets already put in place here. You'll see five athletes and a bunch of different fitness tests. And I've defined each of these as test one, test two, test three, four, five, etc. So I want to have this drop down box say test 1, test 2, test 3, test 4, test 5. So I'm going to do this a slightly different way. I'm simply going to type it in. Now this can be quite a, a nice way to go if you've only got a couple of options to select because that way you don't have to build lists everywhere I'm just going to copy that data validation to these other two and let's choose test 4 now All right. the next thing we're going to do I'll just delete that and start again I want to pull through the date that test one occurred on. So I've created a little page in the control panel here that says test one, test two, test three, test four, test five. And these are just direct links to these cells here. I always like using if error when it's attached to a drop down box in case there's nothing selected. The lookup is always going to produce an error value if uh, um, there's nothing to look up. F3, my range is called test dates. And use it for error, putting a blank is usually the best option. Copy that down. Great. Let's just see if that changes. Select test three. Brilliant. All right. The next thing to do is pull through the test data. So I need it to reference from the name of the athlete and also the test that has been selected. So let's we'll do this one step at a time. I want to look up the athlete. Hit a 4 and then I'll lock that reference B5. Put dollar signs in front of both the row and column. I'm going to choose test 1. And I know that my yo yo data is in column 3. Now, if I hit enter, that's great. It pulls through the data that I want. But unfortunately, if I change it to test 2, it's not going to update. So I need to add to this formula and make it work a little bit more dynamically. So there's a function called indirect and what indirect does 
is it converts text inside a cell. So in this case, the text test one, and it converts that to the name of a range. So what that will do There we go, if I hit F9 I can see what will be evaluated That's all the data in the table called test1 If I've set up my spreadsheet right It means that I've got a, a range called test1 A range called test2 and a range called test3 And that way the VLOOKUP just knows to go to that table So if I hit enter change my selection of test 2 things update great what I will do is because I don't want this to happen if there's no selection I don't want an error I'll just put an if error in front of that Now, sometimes I can just drag that across and everything will work fine, but unfortunately in a VLOOKUP you have to specify the column. So we could do it manually. I could drag this across and make that one 4 and so on and so on. Or I could make the formula completely dynamic, which would be even better. So I'll go across to the first cell and do that. So I want to match the particular test and I'll just put a dollar in front of the 5 I want to match it so that it pulls out the correct column in this table and now if I hit OK Don't want that. That's better. If I hit OK and drag this across, let's see what happens. So apart from the fact that it hasn't formatted the numbers the way I might like them, it's done a pretty good job. So if I copy that. What we can see is it's pulled through the correct column and I can pick and choose my test as I see fit. Now, what these numbers are in rows 8, 10 and 12 is a reflection of where this particular score sits on a scale that I have created. To make a radar chart work, we need every particular component of the radar chart to be on the same scale. So if one test is on a, a distance in meters and the other one's on a time in seconds, things aren't going to work out. So using a control panel page like this, for each of those tests I've created what I consider to be the zero score. So what is the minimum acceptable score that we will let an athlete get? I've also created the perfect score, so what is the, the target that we're aiming for? And because we've got a 0 and a 100 score, every result is going to fit somewhere between those two points. Now there are occasions, depending on how well you set your criteria, where an athlete gets less than the 0 score or more than the 100 score. In those cases, I simply apply 0 or 100. So I've written a little example here to explain how a particular method works. If you've got a test where the minimum score is 120 and the benchmark is 180 and an athlete scores 147, that particular test has a range of 60. Your score is 25 points along that scale, which gives them a score of 47. So when we go up to this if equation, what we'll see is five particular options are covered. If 
there's no selection made in column A leave it blank if there's no data for that particular test when you select test 1 as an option then apply an arbitrary value you don't want a score of 0 in your radar chart because it will make it look pretty, pretty bad next if it's greater than the standard give it 100 if it's less than the 0 give it 0 otherwise find out whereabouts on the spectrum it fits so that's how that particular formula works it's pretty hairy it's got a whole lot of brackets at the end which reflects that there are several formulas nested inside each other so I'm going to insert the chart Got to make it fit inside my little window a bit of tidying up here format the axis we need to have it so that it's always 100 the less grid lines the better so I tend to use 25 and I don't want any decimal places on the axis counter so that looks a little bit better I want to format the grid lines so that the color is as light as possible but still able to sort of be a bit of a guide we need to put in the axis titles in this case there was those and we just need to edit the series with that particular date let's add the other series now Sometimes you have to retell it that it is actually using the same access titles. Just get a bit more obvious colours. I like using black, red, and blue. Get rid of the markers, I think. Make it a little bit cleaner. All right, so we've got three particular um, options on there. Let's just change the person and see what it looks like. Not too bad. So typically what I would do is I'll write a few comments in here and I'll create a PDF of this page and send it off to the athlete. So a few different things looked at today. Um, data validation, if equations and VLOOKUPs make everything work. But the radar chart is the real magic. Thanks for coming by. If you want a copy of the spreadsheet, drop me a line. See you next time.